Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to show you something really cool. I'm going to show you how to do multi-line calculations efficiently for Tableau. Okay. So in order to show you this, I've created like a fake example using some mock data from Mockaroo. So I'll go ahead and connect to the Excel file that I've got here. Now it's this one, which is uh, not labeled to be open during the demo. So let's open that file and you'll see that I have two sheets. The first sheet is the raw data set that I'm actually going to be working with. Don't worry, these aren't real details. It's generated from Mockaroo. And essentially, the task I have in hand is, let's say I've been working on a workbook, and then three months later, HR send me a data set and say, hey, can you update the surnames to these new values? Uh, but instead of sending me the whole entire data set again, they only show me the 27 rows that need updating, the surname and old surname, essentially. Now, you'd probably have an ID field in here, so you've, you're doing like a, a proper match on the right things. But essentially, I'm just going to use this as a simple example of what we want to try and do. Now, the other limitation here is that you're probably working with a published data source, because if you aren't, then the actually most efficient thing to do is to just join these onto your existing data, create a relationship, and boom, you've already got your old surnames sort of related to your new surnames, and you're sort of ready to go, okay? You don't need to sort of worry about what's going on. So what are we going to do here? Well, let me show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to go into sheet one, and many of you, many of you have probably done this. You have the last name column over here and you'll see that you have everything there. And the only real way you can do this is maybe to right click one of these, edit the alias and change them manually, go find each of them. And you know, that's 27 bits of work that you're going to have to go and do. And some of you might, you know, just optimize yourselves and do that in five minutes. I'm going to show you an even quicker way. Now, that's not to create a calculation and manually write the calculation. I'm going to show you how to do this efficiently using another tool. Now, many text editors actually have the ability to edit on multiple lines. If you've worked in web development, you'll already know about this. But in essence, I'm going to use something called VS Code. Now, VS Code is free. It's a very good tool by Microsoft, essentially for code editing, and it supports a whole load of programs. So this is completely tool agnostic. And I'm not showing anything new here. This has been done in web development and many other program programming languages before. So in order to do this, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to select a language. Now, you don't need to do this. This is work. This will work just as a text file. But the reason I'm selecting a language is because I want some familiar formatting. So if I go uh, down here to the bottom right and then select plain text, and then I can type in SQL, you'll see that it comes up with SQL and then I can use a SQL formatting for this. This means when I write, for example, case, it recognizes that that's a statement and I can then start to use that uh, and so on and so forth. So it behaves like it's writing SQL, but we're not. We're just using it to help us format and help us understand what's going on. Okay, so let's actually focus on the task in hand here. So one of the things I could do is write a case statement. So let's, let's sort of uh, start writing that. So I could say case, um, and then I could say uh, last name. This is probably the way most people would go. And then they'll say when, uh, you know, X, uh, then uh, Y, okay? And then they might repeat that over multiple lines and uh, they'll just sit there and they'll type sort of 27 lines of that. Uh, a, a, a common thing I do is actually paste. Now there's a little bug here where sometimes if you copy and paste too quickly, it actually pastes it into the connection. Uh, a, a friend of mine on social media was actually talking about this and it's this bug has actually hit me. So <laughs> it's kind of annoying, but nonetheless, uh, let's go. So as I paste there, you'll see that um, everything is happening normally. Now you might do that over multiple lines and then move forward. Now I'm going to show you a much, much faster way. Okay. So I'm actually just going to go to VS Code and I'm going to basically just start writing the case statement. Okay. So I'm just going to say case. I'll go back to uh, the calculation here and I'll grab the last name and we'll just go back here and I'll paste it. Okay. So case the last name. Now, the thing I need to do next is write when over multiple lines. But you see, I don't want to sort of start counting here. I know there's a line number on the left hand side. Ideally, I want to know exactly how many lines I want to bring in. So in order to sort of, you know, skip this step, what I'm actually going to do is go to my source data source. Now, this is the version that I can open during the demo, but it's an exact copy of my data set. So I'm going to go here into the updates column and you'll see that the old surname is essentially what our current last surname is. So I can grab this old surname. I'm going to copy this. And when I copy everything in Excel, 
and I go back to VS Code. VS Code understands that everything was on a new line because essentially I'm copying from one structured place to another. So when I hit paste, it actually puts them all on a new line. So I don't actually have to count the number of lines. It's exactly 27 to match the 27 rows. Now we're on line 28 because of course the first line was the opening of our case statement. And then I'm actually gonna close that end uh, case statement there. So with an end uh, notation. So. What next? Well, there's actually some really cool shortcuts in VS Code that allow you to do multi-line select. I'll put them up on the screen, but I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Option Command and then up from the bottom here. And what that will do is it will stretch the cursor upwards across the lines that I'm going. So I can just keep going until I get to the second line. And now you can see the cursors on every line. And the key thing here is that I'm looking for somewhere structured that I can insert my text. So I've got the caps lock on. I'm gonna type in when, okay? And then do the first speech marks. And so you're thinking, great, I've done the first half of this. How do I get to the end of the line? Well, if I start traveling right, you'll see that not everything is the same length. So I just can't sort of go the same number of spaces. So. On my keyboard, I'm gonna hit the end shortcut. Now the end shortcut is typical on most proper keyboards. If you don't have the end shortcut, just look for the end sort of notation on your operating system. There's usually a shortcut for that. But for me, I've got a like little key that I can hit end and it goes to the end of the line. That's essentially what you're trying to do. And once you've done that, you can hold shift and do the last speech marks and close that off. And then you can sort of finish typing the rest of the statement, okay? And do that. Now, you're probably wondering, well, we need to put the new surnames inside of these uh, speech marks. So let's go back to Excel. And of course, because VS Code understands the structure of Excel, if I copy these and then I go back to VS Code and make sure that I don't deselect, you can see that I'm just hovering my mouse here and then I immediately hit paste, it's going to put those names in place of where those cursor was. And so there you go, I've written my case statement across multiple lines. I can then copy this, uh, go back to Tableau, and replace this and boom, we should have a valid calculation. You can see that that is there at the very bottom and we've written our case calculation very, very quickly. Now, let's say your boss turns up and says, hey, we, we don't do case statements. We, we do if and logic calculations here. So, right, fine, let's go ahead and do that. So let's change what we've already written to a logic statement rather than a case statement. So how do we do this? Well. A logic statement usually starts with if. So let's get the first line set up. So if last name equals, and let's just get the all code here. Okay, equals that, then that. Okay, so then we've got our structure. We've done our first line. Now we know what we need to repeat across several lines. So essentially, we need to insert this last name equals before each and every when, essentially, okay? And the other thing is, we need to make sure that we open each line with an else if statement. So all these whens need to be replaced with an else if. So let's start with that. Now, if I highlight when, you'll notice that in VS Code, it actually selects multiple lines in like a soft highlighting. So what that means is if I then go and hit Command Shift L, it selects all of them. Essentially, it's looking for some structure in my text. And if I tell it to, it will go ahead and pick everything that has the same structure on different lines. Then I can just go ahead and delete that and type in else if, okay? Now I've got that, the next thing I probably wanna do is paste the last name. Now, if I deselect in here, I'm gonna lose my selection. So what I'll do is I'll sort of hack here and just go select that from last name, go back to VS Code, and then what I can do is hit Control V and it will paste that on every line. And then I can do equals, and there we have our logic statement, okay? So if last name equals all code, then Scanalan. Else if uh, last name equals Karavik, then Tarijos. And it will just keep going, keep going until we get to the end. And then that's pretty much our logic statement done. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And there you go. In the time it's taken to essentially write two logic statements, I've actually created a 27 line if and a 27 line case statement. And again, they're all valid. So uh, let's just call this new surname. Okay, and to make this sort of work nicely, I'm just gonna say else last name, just to make sure that the uh, last names do sort of persist. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just uh, give it something different so it's easy for us to actually see what's changed. So I'll leave everything that hasn't changed as old and I'll leave all the only the new ones as uh, changed. So I hit apply and I'll click okay, go to new surname, 
put that next slide and you can see there that all code changed to Scanalan and that's our calculation done. We can see that if I actually exclude all the old ones, you remain with our 27 changed surnames. So that's a pretty simple trick. Um, it took a bit of a while to explain, but the key thing is to make sure you understand the shortcuts in your code editor. Now, pretty much all code editors will have multi-line select. That's sort of like a standard feature in most uh, web development and programming tools. So just look for whatever that is, whether it's Notepad++, Sublime, um, I'm using VS Code. There's a whole range of other tools out there that will do something similar. And if they don't, get one that does, because it will save you a ton of time. The other thing is you can use this approach to do really long logic statements that just, that's the only way you can do it. You're working in a published data source. That's gonna be the only way you're gonna change something. This is gonna save you a ton of time. So hopefully you found this useful. If you think it's found it useful, let me know in the comments. If you think someone else will find it useful, share it with them. I'd love to know what other tips you'd love to see. Um, I'm gonna just try and do this. Every time I come across something in my day-to-day -day work, I'm gonna try and do a video at the end of the day and just show you what it's like. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe we'll come up with a whole playlist of this kind of content uh, over the next few months. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.